So this takes the attribute value, which will be C colon backslash uh, fake path, and then the image I choose. So if I click on that, uh, you can see you've got C colon backslash fake path uh, backslash tartan dot jpg. So now that we know that this, uh, well, I mean, that was sort of some useless information, I guess, in the sense of the tutorial. But the reason that this change event handler works is because the value attribute is added. So as long as you know that, you'll understand why we actually are using this event handler. Uh, but overall, the you know the notation of change is quite you know easy to understand. So now what we want to do is go ahead and change this submit um, button. So with the ID of submit, we're going to reference it as hash submit. We want to remove this attribute here. So the first way we can do it is change the attribute, or we could go ahead and remove it. So I'll show you both, uh, and you can decide which one you think um, would be better. OK, so once the file has changed, we want to select Submit, and then we want to say um, Attribute Disabled None. So this will change the value of the attribute name Disabled to nothing. So let's just go ahead and look at that. Let's click uh, choose file and let's choose tartan.jpg. Bear in mind this upload button is still, or this upload submit button is still disabled. When I click it, oh, nothing's happened. So let's check check what might have happened. So hash submit.attribute. Okay, so I think perhaps we, we might not be able to actually use this. So let's go ahead and use remove attribute instead. And here we just specify the name of the attribute to be removed, so disabled. Uh, let's go ahead and try that again. I'm going to click choose file, click tartan.jpg, and you see that the attribute for this upload button has been removed, uh, and therefore it, we can now click it and uh, submit our file. So that's the first way that we can go ahead and do it by submitting um, individual um, um, IDs. Now what happens if you always had an input file here, like an input type file, and you always had a submit button afterwards? Now you could go ahead and set up your form uh, like this. You could even set it up without uh, disabled like this. And you could have jQuery automatically do this all for you. So let's go ahead and just get rid of this here. Now. Let's just assume that, um, like I said, if you are in regu regularly including as part of your page on any page in, on your website an input type of file and an input uh, submit type as well. Now, let's just, uh, like I said, assume that we're doing that. We're going to use a general selector to select all input fields with a type file. So let's go ahead and use a selector. So it's an input selector. This would select all input fields. But this time, I want to specify a type inside of here, which is file. So now I can say dot next. And essentially, what this will be doing is it will select this file here. And the next will be this next element here. So I can say uh, any element after this, i.e. next, I'm going to change the attribute or create the attribute disabled to equal disabled. So at the moment, uh, this input submit button doesn't contain a disabled attribute. However, once we've selected any file, um, the next submit button after this will be, uh, you know, will be given this disabled attribute. So let's now refresh, and you can see that that button has been automatically disabled. So any input. Um, of the type submit or any any element essentially after this will be uh, disabled, uh, i.e. our button. So now what we can do is come down to, well, we actually would append it back onto here. So I can say dot change, uh, or oh, sorry, dot, um, I think we would have to do dot, dot previous dot change. And then in here we can create a uh, callback function. In actual fact, let's change this around altogether. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to say dot change. Now, as we did before, we appended this event handler on, but now after this, I'm going to add this. And now in here, I can go ahead and create my function. So let me just run along. I'm just going to pull that down and I'll just uh, explain what's happening. So we select our input type, we append an event handler onto it, but while we're doing that, we select the next element, remember the submit button, and we 
we give it that attribute. So it still worked, uh, as you can see, uh, but we can uh, apply an event handler here as well. For example, alert changed. When we go ahead and change something here, uh, we get this alert box up. So we know that that works now. So as well as an appending on an event handler, we've also selected the next element and disabled it. Okay, so now inside of here, we want to go ahead and uh, enable this um, once it changes. So now all we'll have to do is say this dot next dot uh, remove attribute disabled so once this element here that's been selected ie all file types across our page uh, have changed the next element along which is currently disabled we remove the attribute now it may look like oh okay well once this event takes place we're then going ahead and removing the attribute but then we're you know disabling it uh, this change function or this change event only happens uh, once it's changed this happens regardless it will even though the change event handlers before this will always happen so we won't get the problem that it will be re-disabled for example so I'm going to go ahead and choose tartan.jpg and you can see that the upload button has been enabled so that's just um, uh, a quick bit of information or a long bit of information but in detail about how we can use this. Um, we went for the ID selection before and now we've used this input type file selection and this would work globally across your script as long as you had an input type with, or an input field with a type file and an input type with a type or input field with a type submit. So this will now work globally doing it this way. However, if you're only doing this once off uh, you can apply an ID or a class and select it that way.